All right, so that happened this past weekend. Uh, welcome to another episode of Strength Coach Rants, and today it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be talking about the Matt Petgrave, Adam Johnson incident from this past Saturday. It's all my head, now stuck in the void again. So chances are a few of you are new to this channel. Um, usually we talk about strength and conditioning related topics, whether it's uh, performance or strength training, speed training, all that fun stuff. But today we're going to talk a little bit about movement uh, due to what happened on the ice this past week in the EIHL with Matt Petgrave and Adam Johnson. Um, you know, while not directly strength and conditioning related, it kind of is because we're talking about movement and what happened. So uh, to, to start things off, um, for those of you that don't know much about me, I'm a former hockey player. Uh, I played junior hockey. I played NCAA hockey. Then I finished off playing some club hockey uh, when I transferred to the University of South Florida while I was getting my degree in athletic training. Um, I've been involved in the strength and conditioning field for the past almost 15 years now. Spent a good amount of time working with hockey. Uh, obviously, after I got done playing, it became, or it became somewhat of a niche for me. I was a director of strength and conditioning at the largest ice hockey rink south of New York State for about four years, and I was involved with uh, USA Hockey Women's Program uh, for almost three years. Uh, I ran the day-to-day -day during their residency for the 2018 Winter Olympics, where we won gold. Uh, I was on staff for an IIHF World Championship gold medal. <laughs> an Olympic gold medal, two Four Nations Cup gold medals, and uh, two 18U gold medals and a silver. So I was involved with the game of hockey for a long time. I don't play anymore, uh, but, you know, it, I, I still obviously watch and enjoy and understand the game. So today we're going to talk about what actually happened on the ice because a lot of people are under the impression on social media that this dude, Pet Grave, went out of his way to intentionally kick Johnson in the throat. And I'm here to tell you that's absolutely not the case. So chances are you've already seen this incident if you frequent Twitter or TikTok, even Facebook and Instagram. Um, but, you know, if you don't understand what you're looking at, you may not have any idea what happens. At first glance, at full speed, it looks like Pet Grave kicks Johnson directly in the throat and on purpose. But again, like I said, I'm here to tell you that's absolutely not the case. What you have right now is a bunch of grifters online trying to get impressions, especially on uh, on Twitter, <clears throat> in order to monetize what happened. So it's it's really disingenuous on the part of a lot of people, a bunch of morons who have never played the game of hockey, who don't understand the physics of the movement that it, like in general, but especially on that field of play, it is different. Like or sorry, it is different than any other field of play in the sense that you are skating around on one eight one eighth inch thick steel while uh, moving at, you know, crazy high speeds. Things happen in hockey that don't happen in other sports because the speed of the game or the speed at which the game is played. Goodness gracious, I'm struggling today. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to watch this in full speed. I've cut the tail end of the clip off because I don't think everybody needs to see that. What we'll see here is what builds up into the play and then the play in general. So I'll pull that up here. All right, so you start off if you're not uh, if you're not watching, you're just listening. Uh, just for those of you, there's also a, an audio component of this um, that goes up on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all those other various platforms. Uh, there's a play that's going through the neutral zone. Um, right when they get to about the blue line is when this happens. Oddly enough, this play was offsides to begin with. It should have been called dead uh, before the kick happened. I don't, I'm not sure if it was. Maybe it was. But uh, we'll watch it here, and then I'll kind of break down what happened. He's skating over, offsides, boom. Kicks right to the neck, all right? It looks very intense. It happens so fast. If you don't know what you're looking at, it looks like he kicked this dude in the throat on purpose, and we'll watch it one more time before we slow it down. Comes up, upper left-hand corner, and it's it's absolutely horrifying to watch. That play happened very fast. Everything happened incredibly fast, as it does in the sport of hockey, all right? But what happened, let's zoom this in, all right? Or actually, no, sorry. We're going to slow this down a little bit before we zoom in. Um, all right, so... <clears throat> Here is the tail end of this play. It doesn't show the buildup. It just shows Petgrave coming into, uh, I'm not sure who this gentleman is who was originally in front of him. Um, but you can watch it for yourself. Foot comes up, kicks Johnson directly in the throat. This is an unfortunate outcome to a play. 
that happens more often than you'd think in hockey. It's a it's a crazy sport. Legs go flying up in the air. Guys lose their balance. There's been two other cases where somebody's been kicked in the neck and had their uh, their carotid slit. It was Mallerchuk back in the 80s, and he had Zednik. I think that was like 2000. Late 2000s, early 20 teens, um, where he got hit in the neck as well. His athletic trainer actually had to go out and pinch his carotid artery to, to stop the bleeding so he didn't die. So what we're gonna, what we're going to show next is this same thing slowed down, zoomed in. Now this like the the quality of the video is not very good because it's so zoomed in, uh, but it's going to give you a better understanding of what actually happened. So, all right. So you can see. Two players from the opposite team here. All right, they're going to enter the zone. And like I said, oddly enough, uh, this was offsides. It's a weird play that, that that this wasn't blown dead. I don't know that blowing it dead would have changed the outcome, though, because, again, everything happens so fast. So I'm going to stop it. So here's Petgrave on your bottom right. All right. And this guy that's between him and the puck carrier, that is the guy he's originally trying to make an illegal play on. All right. So he is going to try to trip him with his foot. And then he misses, and his foot goes up and hits Johnson directly in the neck. So we'll watch it here, and then I'll, I'll break it down and, and rewind and all that. Right there. Boom. All right. So we'll go back. If you look at this spot right here, all right, he is doing one of two things. Petgrave is either trying to hit this gentleman that is directly in front of him, or he is trying to trip him. I think he was trying to trip him. He put all of his weight onto his left foot. He's leaning into that left leg. It is impossible to kick from this position. You can't do it. You just cannot kick when all your weight's on that leg. And then goes in. You'll see he's actually going to make co slight contact with his foot right there. All right. He misses, and this is the sad and unfortunate part of this. He misses, and that foot gets carried directly up into the air. So you can imagine you were trying to trip a grown man all right, with your leg. You've got to put a severe amount of pressure on that leg in order to not lose balance yourself and win the battle of the trip. He misses, and that foot goes flying up directly into Adam's neck, and it is absolutely tragic, and it's horrible. And it's a horrible outcome to a separate illegal play that that Petgrave was trying to make. So this was not on purpose. He was trying, and so he was trying to make a separate illegal play in tripping the guy in front of him, missed, and or possibly trying to hit him, missed, and that leg got carried up into Johnson's neck. What a lot of people don't realize is hockey skates have what's called a rocker on it. So your, your blade is not flat. It's curved on the edges, so on the front and the back. So if you were to try to kick your leg on the ice and maintain it on the ice, if you miss what you were trying to kick or trip, that foot's more than likely going to carry up. And you can even see, we'll go back to, uh, to that play here. He's got his entire body weight right here leaned into that left leg. All right, you can see it. You cannot kick on purpose from that position. So leans into it, tries to trip him. When that object that he was trying to push his leg into was no longer there, he's not Superman, he can't stop on a dime. That carries his leg up. There's no way to react to this, and it is a sad, tragic, horrible outcome to a bad situation. But you cannot tell me that Petgrave was trying to, to kick Johnson in the neck. There's no chance. I don't think he was trying to kick him at all. I think it's a, a, a trip that got away from him with a tragic outcome. You can see, go back. Again, he's here, misses, right? So you can see right, uh, look at his left foot. He actually makes a little bit of contact with that guy's leg there. All right, boom, misses. His foot is aimed right at Johnson. So you can see more than likely that you know that that rocker came into play you don't have traction all right on the ice there's nothing to stop it it's just a fluid motion uh straight up and then boom kicks him right in the neck and it's tragic and it is horrifying and it is awful that this man lost his life do i think it was murder absolutely not this was more than likely a case of you want to call it manslaughter that's fine because he was trying to make a separate illegal play but this is a case where somebody was trying to do something else illegal when it comes to the sport and it ended up tragically, horrifyingly in a total opposite direction. So I don't believe Matt Petgrave did this intentionally. I don't believe that he should be tried, you know, as a murderer. I, I truly believe if you want to go after him for something, and that's completely fair, let's call it manslaughter because it was 
absolutely not what he was trying to do. I personally don't even believe he was trying to kick that leg. I think it got away from him when he was trying to make that trip or possibly throw a hit on that original gentleman that was standing right in front of him. All right, so if any of your friends are telling you, you know, Pet Grave did that on purpose, show them this video. Uh, it's not that long. Uh, you get to see it nice and slowed down. You can see what his intent more than likely was. And again, I'm not Matt Petgrave. I can't tell you what he was thinking. Everybody is kind of coming down on this guy because he does play the game like a total shit bag, right? He's got all these penalty minutes. He mouths off to, mouths off to refs. He's got a spearing call uh, from this season. I think he leads the league in penalty minutes from what, I, what I've heard. All right, but that, that doesn't mean that he was trying to kick somebody period, or kick somebody in the throat. A spear and mouthing off to the ref is totally different than a total intent to like really injure somebody, although you could make the argument that spearing, he was trying to, uh, to injure somebody as well. But I can guarantee he wasn't trying to end this young man's life. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something. This was a pretty quick episode. I just wanted to get this out there while this is still kind of something people are talking about because I think it's horrific that this young man is having his life altered in a way after it, he'll never be able to play the sport of hockey again, I doubt. They might kick him out for one, but two, can you imagine getting back on the ice after having like a tragic accident like this? Imagine you're driving your car, right? And a, a young kid jumps out in front of your car. You're not like, maybe you're going three miles an hour over the speed limit. So you're technically breaking the law and a kid jumps out in front of your car and something tragic happens. You probably wouldn't want to drive ever again. I can't imagine that Matt Petgrave is all that keen to get back onto the ice right now. His life has been changed. Adam Johnson, his family's life have obviously been changed. And this is a horrific, horrific outcome. So Save the judgment, watch the video. Hopefully you learned something and uh, we'll see you next time. It's all my head, now stuck in the fight.